Today, fellas, we're going to do a review of a suction type machine, the VPI Cyclone. It's a real workhorse of a machine. We've had it for years. We like to show you how to use it, how to get the best out of it. Lately, we've been focusing on ultrasonic machines. The last three episodes we released were all about the Kermis. We're a big fan of ultrasonic machines, but I believe there is still a place for good quality suction machines, either as a pre-cleaning regimen before going into an ultrasonic bath or as a standalone surface cleaning machine. They do a great job. We particularly like the VPI Cyclone, so we're going to show you how to get the best out of it. We have to choose a record for that purpose. Always like to turn you on to new music, potentially anyway. This album is by David Liebman from 1973. David Liebman is the saxophonist and flautist who played with the Miles Davis band during this era. He was with Miles Davis from 1970 through 74, uh, which was there known as Miles' Electric Period. This record, which is called First Visit, refers to his first visit to Japan. When he was touring with Miles, they did go to Japan. By the way, the um, catalog number here is Philips RJ5101. I really dig this album for a couple of reasons. First of all, First Class Sidemen. He's playing with Dave Holland on bass, Jack DeZanette on drums, both of whom previously played with the Miles Davis Band, but not at this time, and uh, Richard Barry, a longtime friend and collaborator of Dave Liebman's. But I'll tell you what made me think about this record. There is a link below to another YouTuber by the name of Adam Neely. Great YouTube channel. It's all about music. The particular video that we have in mind is about the seven steps of jazz chords. Even if you've never played music in your life, I urge you to check it out. It's a great explanation of how chords can get more complex through seven different stages. He refers to them as peppers. The more spicy the, the pepper, uh, the more complex the chordal progression. And he used Dave Liebman as an example of a particularly spicy player, and I would agree with that. What I really love about this particular record is it captures much of the same fire and, and influence that we hear from the Miles Davis band of this era, but it's an entirely acoustic piece. Really beautiful stuff. And uh, interestingly, it looks like Dave Liebman signed it. In any case, we'll take a little closer look. Liner notes, all in Japanese. This was recorded and pressed in Japan in June of 1973. Little note of thanks to the jazz fans of Japan, which I thought was pretty cool. It does appear to be the original Phillips pressing. We'll give you a close up of what's in the groove, what's in the run out, close up of the label and uh, we'll get to cleaning it is uh, part of our review of the VPI Cyclone machine. Let's get to it. Let's clean this record. Okay, let's take a look at what you get with the VPI Cyclone. To start off, let's take a look at the machine itself. You can tell it's, well, one, it's built like a tank. Uh, and it is rather utilitarian in its approach. Not something that I would want to display and say, oh, look how pretty this machine is. One example is the silicon caulking that is applied at the seam. I'm sure it's effective in keeping the water out, but it's applied in a manner that I would call you know, less than precise. And frankly, it's just a big black box. So if you don't mind what your cleaning machine looks like, uh, then this is one to consider for a suction type machine. Of course, it comes with a platter. Uh, they use a cork, a cork mat. You can't replace this mat, but this has been on here for years and years and never seen any sign of, uh, of it deteriorating. There's also a screw-on clamp. This is a threaded spindle. Very, very important you use this, otherwise your record will just spin around and damage, frankly, so you don't want that. Also has a, a small spring. The wand and column rests on that spring, 
This is what they look like. We recommend having two, one for the record clean fluid and one for the pure water, water rinse. We'll get to that in a second. It just simply slides right in and rests on the spring. So pretty easy, pretty efficient. There's two knobs, one to turn the unit on, either in a forward direction, the platter that is, in a forward direction or in a reverse direction. It's one of the nice things about the Cyclone, that bi-directionality that really helps the cleaning process. And then there's an on-off switch for the suction element itself, for the suction motor. Moving on to what you're going to need to clean a record here. Obviously, you're going to need a record cleaning fluid. Today, we're going to use La Art du Son. There's a, it's a good one, but there's a lot of others out there. Use the record cleaning fluid of your choice. You want to follow that up with a pure water rinse, in this case from AIVS. Of course, you'll need a brush. We would strongly recommend two brushes, one for record clean fluid, one for the pure water. We actually like to use two brushes for each step. That is two brushes for record clean fluids, two brushes for water. In our case, the uh, Walker Prelude brush to actually apply the fluid, and then the Osage brush to agitate the fluid. We find that is a, a really nice way to do it. You kind of get the best of both worlds. They're very different in their design. Next, you'll want to have some pure water to clean the brushes in between steps. You really want to do that. You don't want to carry a contaminants from one side of the record to another. So this is just like a little ketchup bottle, that sort of thing. And we get water from the local supermarket where it's deionized and reverse osmosis water. Pretty pure. Some guys like to use distilled. Whatever your choice, get the purest water that you can. Before you even start the process, we like to blow off the larger pieces of material and contaminants with the Giotto Blaster. Some guys will prefer to use a brush, a carbon fiber brush. I favor the, the Giotto Blaster. like to also have a soft toothbrush. It's basically used to brush off the brushes in between to keep them further clean. You want some sort of bowl, a receptacle to scrape the water off the brush and into the bowl. You certainly want something for the little spills that are inevitable. It's normal to have water fall off the side of the record, record clean fluid and or water. Lastly, I'd like to show you what we keep our wands and columns in. These are, we'll just set that there, these are just little food containers that you could get from the Beth and Beyond kind of store. And what we've done is taken a large, a big fat drill bit and drilled holes all around the sides and then taken a torch lighter like you would use to light a cigar and hit on both sides to sort of clean up any of the little bits of sharp plastic. This allows you to keep the wand and column safe and allows it to dry because when you put it you don't want to seal it when it's damp. Lastly, something that's very important, the machine does come with one wand and column. We like having two at a minimum, one for the record cleaning fluid, one for the pure water rinse. You can use just one column and change the wand out every time. That's another option, save you a little bit of money that way. One thing you want to keep in mind when putting the column in, it's important, sorry, let's get this in the right way. It's important that the slit on the bottom not be exactly perpendicular to the column. You want it to be offset just a few degrees. So push it in and just turn it. There's just enough play there to allow it to be offset just a little bit. That will ensure that there's room for the water and record cleaning fluid to be sucked up into the column. So that's the way that works. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's get a record, our record on and show you some of the best practices and techniques for using the VPI Cyclone. Helpful hint, get in the habit of cleaning side one first and side two second in case you get distracted in the middle of cleaning a record. It's happened. Just a few blows with the Giotto will take off the larger contaminants. Make sure you clamp it down. You don't have to use a lot of strength there. Just make sure it's snug. Now we'll insert our wand and column. By the way, these velvet 
lips here uh, will wear out over time. You'll see them begin to map down. You can buy a replacement wand from VPI that comes with their ellipse attach, their pads. They really are very quite velvety. Or you can buy aftermarket ones, which is what we're seeing here. These are from the Disc Doctor. Uh, link below for those particular pads. We did a quick video on them. quite like them. I like to give them a quick brush in between each usage. I like to start with the record going in a reverse direction counterclockwise. All right, now we will have pre-cleaned all of our brushes before we start. Just rinse them off with some nice clean water. You don't want any contaminants from the previous record that you cleaned. So what we'll need to do is apply our record cleaning fluid. How much Take a look at what I put on. You'll get the hang of it over time. If you find, after you've started the, applying the brush, that there's not enough, you can always add more. And if you apply too much, it'll simply spill over on the edge and you can mop it up, no problem. So, we'll use the Prelude, and in this case, the nap is coming forward. That is to say, the, the record is coming into the nap. It's a unidirectional nap. Once it's made a few revolutions, focus your brush along the run-out groove, right up to the edge of the label. Let it go around once or twice. Ditto for the run-in groove. And then just let it make a few more revolutions with a little gentle back and forth motion. And now that brush has done its thing. You can go ahead and clean it immediately. So it's ready for the next go around. Now we have the Osage brush. Really like the Osage for agitating the liquid. As you can see, we dedicate different Osage brushes to different record cleaning fluids, in this case, L'Art du Somme. Start off in the middle. You're not applying a lot of pressure here. Just enough to agitate the liquid, get those bubbles started. Once they get going, I like to turn the brush sideways, address the run-out groove. Two or three revolutions should do it. Same for the edge of the record, the run-in. Good. Now what I'm going to do is agitate the liquid as much as possible, get as, much, as many suds and bubbles as I can, and continue that process when I turn on the vacuum. First we want to get those bubbles going. A good record cleaning fluid like L'Art du Somme will produce a lot of bubbles. helps get the surface as clean as possible. That looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and turn on the vacuum. to go ahead and brush that off and get it ready for the next one. Now we're going to go to the wand dedicated for pure water. Same process. Again, we're going to start with the walker brush, the prelude. We're 
focus on the run out groove, the record's edge. With the prelude, there's not a lot of agitation. You just want to let the brush do the work. Maybe just some slight movement back and forth. Very good. This is our massage brush dedicated to pure water. Start in the middle, Let's get things working, and then focus on the run out groove, just as you did with the record clean fluid. A couple of rotations should do the trick. The record's edge is often the dirtiest. So that's where fingerprints are most likely to be found. Maybe you spend a little extra time there, particularly if you see fingerprints on the edge. Although the, you won't get sudsy bubbles, obviously, but you still want to use a more agitated-like approach when using the massage, even with the water. Mix, up, mix it up. Little figure eight motions, back and forth, each direction. But I'm, you'll note I'm not pressing very hard. One thing I like to do before engaging the motor, with my left hand and put the brush right up next to the wand. And that way the there'll be a, a thick flow of water as it's going into the uh, into the wand like so. things you might have noticed there you always want to take advantage of the bi-directionality of the platter so I, you saw that I worked it I agitated the liquid with the platter moving in one direction but once I engaged the suction motor let it pass for a little bit I then put it in the other direction this definitely helps uh, with the cleaning process and secondly when you're through with the with a particular step on one side of the record you want to turn off the suction motor first don't stop the platter with the suction motor engaged. That's a no-no. Okay, so that's side one. Let's go on and flip it over to side two. One other note to keep in mind. After the pure water rinse is applied and you've brought it up with the suction motor, you'll want to let it go for a little while so that the side is nice and dry. It would not be good to put a wet side down onto the cork mat. Frankly, you'd just have to clean it all over again. One other thing, any bits of dirt that might be on the cork mat and that have transferred onto the side two of the record, you want to knock those off with the Giotto Blaster before we actually engage side two. Okay, side two down, clamp on. I always like to clean after every step so it's ready to go. And sometimes I clean it again just for good measure. Okay, record cleaning fluid. Just as before, let it spread out a bit. Focus on the runout groove and the edge. You can see, by the way, that Laura Dusson has a nice amount of surfactant in it. It spreads nicely, evenly across the surface of the record. One of the things we like about that particular brand of record cleaning fluid. And here we go.
now to the pure water rinse. Sometimes a little rocking back and forth motion is nice. Not much pressure at all. That side too, again, just in case side, the side that was on the cork mat picked up any contaminants. Hit it one last time. If you're a fan of the Zero Stat, you can hit it with that. Not sure if this is the inner sleeve, but it's old and nasty, so go with the new sleeve. Let's go listen to this record. Final thoughts and for the record, we hope you enjoyed our review of the VPI Cyclone. We think this is an excellent quality suction type machine. And I think even if you have an ultrasonic type machine, it's good to have a suction type machine, particularly if you like to search out old and very dirty records. It makes it excellent pre-clean. And there's nothing wrong with having a suction type machine as your only type machine. And if you're going to go for one, I definitely recommend the Cyclone. It's a monster of a machine. It'll never overheat. I love the bi-directionality of it. Really top quality type machine. As far as the music is concerned, it sounded fantastic. It wasn't a particularly dirty record, but there were lots and pops of clicks when we played it beforehand, and it was dead silent afterwards. So kudos to VPI for getting the job done there. This record... If you are a Dave Liebman fan, you must check this one out. I would also say if you're a fan of Miles Davis music, particularly from the 70s era, this has a lot of that same color, a lot of that same influence. It's many of the musicians here played with Miles Davis. Dave Liebman was playing with him at the time that this was recorded. So think of it as 70s era Miles Davis, but all acoustic. Kind of cool stuff. On to the next record. Okay, the last step that you want to take is to drain the reservoir. It's important that you do that every time you use the machine. You don't want to leave it in overnight. And if you're cleaning a lot of records, I'd say you'd want to stop about every fourth or fifth record, depending on how much liquid you're using and, and drain the tank. It's not very large, but it's pretty easy to drain. There's no other cleaning that's required. Occasional dusting is about all it takes. To properly drain the machine, I re recommend a gallon jug, a water bottle, milk bottle, whatever, with a little slit cut in the top. That way the, you can insert the hose and it kind of helps hold it there, it acts as a third hand. So the procedure is pretty straightforward. You want to take off your spring and the nut, unplug the machine for safety. And this is the hose through which the wastewater drains. It's got this little plastic connector that squeezes down on it. You can see it's clamped down in there so that you don't get any leakage. When you're ready to drain it, you just pick it up like that. Before I actually drain the tank though, I want you to take notice here. 
It's not uncommon, after you've used the machine for a long time, for there to be a little bit of mildew and mold that will occasionally uh, form inside the tube. I purposefully left this here for you so that you could see what uh, inevitably happens over time. The way I like to tackle that is with a bleach solution, maybe 10, 15, 20 percent. Make sure your clip is open. Insert and go ahead and fill up the hose with the bleach solution. Won't hurt anything. There you go. And just let it sit in there for maybe a minute. And that will move it around a little bit is nice. Okay, we can go ahead and drain that right with whatever water is in the reservoir. Not going to be a lot as we only cleaned one record today, but this is basically the procedure. Set this down on something steady. There you go. And then I like to lift the machine up just to make sure we get it all out. Give it a little wiggle wiggle. And that is all there is to it. Do be sure and Lock that back in place so no water comes out when it's not intended to. Put your spring back on. Store that in there. Dust cover. And that's all there is to it. All right. It says peace, so I guess that's cool.